Hello everyone and welcome to what's a bit of a 3D printing video but it's actually a cockpit video and uh, what have we got here well this is one of my old Thrustmaster Cougar joysticks and I've mummified it in masking tape as an experiment in uh, 3D scanning but more on that depending on how that works out. Uh, here we've got my wife's Thrustmaster Warthog, obviously the updated version of this and one of the most notable differences, although there are quite a few other subtle ones, is this is the what is the F-16 autopilot disengage lever for the Cougar and obviously it's nowhere near as large as the one on the Warthog and from photographs I can see this is probably more uh, realistic than this one. It also has a very nice kind of sprung load action on it. This one doesn't. Anyway, I thought to myself as I was looking at this, we might be able to do something about the size of this and perhaps make something using Fusion 360 and 3D printing to essentially retrofit a larger lever on top of this one. So let's head over to Fusion 360 now and see what we can come up with. So here we are in Fusion 360 and rather than start modelling the part that we're after straight away we're actually going to model some characteristics of the existing uh, lever and I'll explain why as we go along. So let's just start with the sketch and we'll use the rectangle, measure the plate if you like at the front of the existing lever and do a sketch for that and an extrusion. Then we'll put in a construction plane and if I just show that to match the existing lever we'll then draw another sketch which is the lever itself and we'll extrude that out to the correct width and join it at the same time to the rectangular plate at the back. Now we don't need to model all the pivot and pin part at the back here we just need this front piece. Then we're going to model the profile or cross section of the actual lever we're after. Extrude that out and then using a combine operation we'll use the existing lever that we've just modelled to carve away at the back of the new lever. So if I just turn some of these sketches off and we're left with a shape which should with a bit of tweaking uh, for printing tolerances should just snap onto the existing lever which will fit into this recess here and then we can use an epoxy to glue the two bits together. Right now we're going to add some dimples to the front and this is quite a long exercise but to start with the way I've done this is I've drawn another sketch and used a line which matches the profile on the side here. I've actually drawn a number of lines, each two millimeters, I think it was, it could be, yep, two millimeters apart, all the way down for the area we want, we want stippling on. So then we create a sphere and we can move the sphere using a point to point move from wherever it got created to this point here. Then all we need to do now is create new spheres and move them to each of the points down this line. Okay, now we've got down to the bottom. What we need to do now is essentially create a copy of all of these spheres and then copy them across. But first of all, let's just move the first row or column if you like of spheres into the right place. There we go and then we start copying and moving the copies across in this axis here so that's the y-axis. And we just rinse and repeat that all the way across and there's our stippling essentially. Now these are all, all these spheres, all, several hundred of them are separate models of bodies to the actual lever itself so then we use a number of combine operations just to combine those spheres into this body 
And then really it's just a case of tidying up this lever with uh, some fillets around the outside and we're ready to send this over to the printer. Fairly simple print this one although I'm using a smaller layer height than normal and also doing it pretty slowly as well. Okay having printed that we can tear the brim material off and then using a deburring tool which is almost an essential piece of kit I've found for 3D printing we can get rid of any excess or flash material around the edges of the print itself. Having done that we can then dig the support material out of the back of that cavity where the existing lever will fit. Okay so I've trimmed this up a bit and uh, tidied it up. It's not bad print actually in the thinner layer lines so it's 0.05 millimeter layer lines meant that there's very little layers showing although there are some ripples uh, from the sudden change of direction in this area but I mean that's nothing you couldn't sort out with a bit of sandpaper it's really annoying and it's not to be honest. The stippling's come out very nicely on the front so that's great and if I get hold of the old lever you can see that fits over the top and fits quite snugly so what we'll do now is we'll epoxy these two bits together and then get the cougar reassembled at some point and installed back into the cockpit. Decided just to use some standard five minute epoxy on this. Um, I figured it would hold in place and actually I've been using this mod for some time now and it's held up to a, a little bit of punishment. I'm sure if you really grabbed it you'd probably break it but you might also break the stick at the same time. But it seems to be working fine so just make sure you don't use too much glue otherwise you might get some in the mechanism there. So just a case of fitting it back onto the cockpit and check for function and it seems to work okay. You might want to put a spring in there at some stage or something to make the action a bit smoother but um, yeah good upgrade. So thanks for watching I'll catch you on the next video and also the model for this is available on Thingiverse if you look in the description below.